Well, first I'd like to thank um, David and everyone at KosherTube for giving me the opportunity to spend a few minutes with you uh, before Rosh Hashanah. Of course, it's a very busy time for everyone and a very important time. But I thought if I could just take a moment or two, I wanted to speak to you about a medrash, which I think will give us a bit of an insight into Rosh Hashanah, which hopefully, if it's uh, something that you have a moment to look at, might be uh, worthwhile. <clears throat> and the, the medrash is that, uh, as we know in the Torah and in the Torah reading that we have, that Yishmael was sent away. He sent away from Avraham, and um, as is his mother. And one always wonders, whatever happened to Yishmael? And in fact, we don't hear from him ever again until much, much later in the Torah, at the funeral of Avraham, it tells us that Yishmael shows up. And it's almost as if Yitzchak is up saying a hesped for his father Avraham, and he looks out over the room and he sees in the back a guy with an open shirt, perhaps sandals, sunglasses, shows up, and who is it but his brother Yishmael? And it makes one wonder, what happened to Yishmael all these years? What became of him? One would not expect the most since he was sent away in such a, a manner. And what was Avraham's feelings? As we learned that when Avraham uh, is, uh, takes Yitzchak to the Akeda, that he, Hashem says to him, I want you to take your son. And Avraham says, which son? Well, the son that you love. Well, I love both my sons. And certainly, if Avraham loved Yishmael, he must have been heartbroken to have to send him away, even though that's what he had to do. And it's, the Medrash tells us that the long came a time, many years later, that Avraham went off, and he went to find Yishmael, and to find out what happened to him. And it says that he went to Yishmael's home. And there he finds Yishmael's wife, and Yishmael's out working with his mother in the field. And as Yishmael's wife tells him, tells Avraham that he's not there, and Avraham asks if I could come in. I've been taking a long ride on my camel. I'm very hungry and thirsty. And she says, well, we have nothing here for you, and my husband's not here, so I'm sorry we, we can't have you in. So she doesn't realize who it is, and he says, well, please tell Yishmael that an old man came to see him and that his home is not suitable for him, which was, of course, Avram's way of saying that the kindness that Yishmael should have shown a stranger uh, did not come through and that his wife, who acted in this way, was not suitable for such a person. It says that years went on, and again, Abraham came back to try to find his son once again, and the same thing happens although this time he has a different wife. And the wife answers the door and Yishmael's not home, he's out with his mother working, and she invites him in. And she gives him food and she gives him something to drink. And Avraham then says to, says to her that as Yishmael is gone, he gives her a blessing. And the house, it says, is filled with light and filled with food. And Avraham leaves without a message for Yishmael. Now this time, of course, Yishmael comes back and he instantly sees the change in the house. That here, here he comes and the house is filled with light and filled with food and all types of wonderful things. And he asks his wife, well, what happened? She says, well, an old man came and he asked for you and I invited him in and I gave him something to eat and drink. And then he, he realized you weren't coming back and he left. Now, one has to wonder about this story, and we can understand it certainly on many levels. We can understand it about personal relationships between a father and a son. But we can also understand this measure on the level of Hashem and the Jewish people. And that the Jewish people often go astray. They're far away. Each one of us are not necessarily the people that we would like to be. And often we go and we do things that we shouldn't do, or we act or we think in ways that we shouldn't, and we regret it. And we wonder how far I've gone, and is it possible for Hashem to take me back? And here we see the symbol of Avraham in the place of the Almighty, and Yishmael in the place of us. And here you see that the love of a father carries on no matter what happens to the child. And no matter where he goes and what he does, Avraham never could forget Yishmael, even though he sent him away and he wasn't good to have in the home. Nevertheless, it was always his son, as we are children, sons, of the Almighty, and that no matter how far away we get, if we just keep the mitzvah of chesed, the kindness, that even if we've gone far away from the Almighty and we're not the people that we should be, nevertheless we know that as Avraham still loved Yishmoel and still cared for Yishmoel and still considered himself his father, so too we always have a father in the Almighty, no matter how far away we get and how distant we are from him.
And so as we're about to enter Rosh Hashanah, we should do so with intrepidation, and we should do so with a certain amount of healthy fear, and some healthy guilt as well. But we should know that no matter how far we've gotten, and how far we've fallen, that nevertheless, the Almighty still cares for us and still loves us like a father, that if Avraham could love Yishmoel, then certainly the Almighty still loves us. So certainly if I can leave you with a blessing, the blessing would be that we all should be much closer to the Almighty than perhaps Yishmael may have been, but that we should be able to know that the love of a father of the Almighty for his children, for us, will carry us through, and that we should be blessed that, the, that Hashem finds that goodness within us and sees the commitment that we've made to become the person and the people we, we really should be. And it gives us a home full of light and every type of blessing, just as Avraham did for Yishmoel on that fateful day when he went back to see him once again, where soon we're going to have our own fateful day of Rosh Hashanah, and the Almighty will come to see us. And we hope that he'll find a house and a life filled with Torah and mitzvahs, and at the very least, a life filled with chesed. So thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to seeing everyone over the next while. And uh, my wishes to everyone for a wonderful, happy, and inspired Shana Tova.